Hi, my dear Astro family. Today I wanted to make a video about the upcoming Venus and Mars conjunction. So therefore we are going to be having two aspects of the week class. One of the reasons I wanted to do is because I kind of felt like, you know, the, uh, the previous one, having the previous video didn't describe the whole picture. Because of course we were talking about you know, the Pluto, Venus, the Pluto, Mars, but we've got this Venus and Mars um, aspect, which is going to be starting actually a new Saros cycle. So this video will cover how this planetary combo might impact the following couple of years. But if you would like to know how it might affect you on a personal level, then you can book a reading with me, as well as sign up on my YouTube family, where you get additional 10 videos a month about the energies affecting you more on your personal level, because I, I break these down for you according to your rising sign. And I've got a very exciting course or webinar coming up. It's going to be about the solar return chart where I will be giving you a step-by-step -step guide how to analyze your own solar return chart. And also I will be doing one lecture about death. So I will be giving you indications of death in the chart and what planet rules death. The secret is it's not Pluto, in my opinion. So if you are curious about these, then sign up for it. Now, let's get going with this upcoming Venus and Mars cycle. First of all, Venus and Mars meet approximately about every two years. Now, what I recommend doing is, and here I'm going to give you straight away the degrees, what you want to be paying attention to, because basically we have got a conjunction happening between them two, and it's going to be happening on six degree of Aquarius. And this is a synodic cycle. Synodic cycle means that it starts with a conjunction and they have got their own phases. So there will be a point when Venus and Mars are going to be in retrograde, uh, sorry, when they are going to be squaring each other. There's going to be a point when they're going to be opposing each other. And there is going to be another conjunction taking place. So the practical advice here is watch out what happens to you around the actual conjunction. The conjunction would be about unification of the cosmic lovers in a way. So that's a start of something new. And then when there is going to be a square or an opposition happening, those are some type of changes what we make, sometimes crisis situations and so forth. So to give you an example, let's suppose you start a new relationship on the 22nd of February. That's when the new conjunction is happening between Venus and Mars. Now the, the relationship is going to get tested when those are going to be in square and maybe it leads to a breakup for example if it's happening uh, when the, the opposition is happening between the, uh, those two planets and maybe the, the new conjunction which is only going to be happening in 2026 around January 8th on 18 degree of Capricorn then you might get together with someone new. So the degrees are and these are going to be sensitive degrees. So I'm going to give you another example. Let's start, uh, let's say you start a new relationship on the 22nd of February, for example. Now, the degree there between Venus and Mars is six degree of Aquarius. So whenever that six degree of Aquarius gets activated in your chart by other transiting planet, then something is happening in your relationship. So, for example, let's imagine that Pluto will be hitting that six degree at, for example, 2025 September, okay? So that September 2025 becomes a pivotal moment in your relationship. So the degrees, six degree of Aquarius. The first square between these two planets, so between Venus and Mars, is going to be happening on 21 degree Gemini to 21 degree Virgo. So basically, Mars is going to be on 21 degree of Gemini, and then Venus is going to be on 21 degree of Virgo. This is going to be happening in August 2024. So this is the first testing period. Then we're going to have the opposition happening on 6 degree of Aquarius to 6 degree of Leo, 2024 December, around the 22nd of December. Now, do you see something here straight away? The conjunction happened on 6 degree of Aquarius. 
the opposition will be taking place on six degree of Aquarius to six degree of Leo as well. And then there is going to be the third square, the third quarter square happening between them two on 21 degree Virgo to 21 degree Gemini. Aha, we had the first square on 21 Gemini to 21 Virgo. And we've got the second square happening as well on 21 Virgo to 21 Gemini. But what's going to happen here is that Mars is going to be in the sign of Virgo and Venus is going to be in the sign of Gemini. So that's going to be 2025 around July 23rd. And then we're going to have the last, uh, the, the new conjunction, the new cycle starts between them two in 2026, around 8th of January, 18 degree of Capricorn. So the sensitive degrees, to summarize on those, 6 Aquarius, 21 Gemini, 21 Virgo, and 6 degree of Leo. These are your sensitive degrees. If you have got any planets there, then I would say that this year from a re or the, the next couple of years, actually, from a relationship point of view is really transformational for you, especially if it's a retrograde planet, then you're going to have to do loads of internal work to fix, for example, some of your relationship cycles. If it's a direct planet, you know, it might be just moving forward, for example, with a relationship of your own, with yourself, with others as well. Some of you will experience such things as divorce, and some of you will experience a unification with someone. So, but I wanna share loads of interesting things about the Venus-Mars cycle. So I'm gonna talk about one of the previous ones. One of the previous ones happened in 2019, October 24th, and that happened on four degree of Virgo. So as I mentioned, these two planets are meeting approximately every two years. The interesting fact is that they meet every 32 years around the same degree. So for example, they made a conjunction in Leo on 19 degree, for example, and then 32 years later, they're going to make the conjunction again somewhere around 19 degree plus minus two degree. So Remember that the conjunction is a start of something new, and then it will only unfold itself in the next couple of years. So we have got the cosmic lovers here, right? Uh, Venus is the planet of love, Mars is the sexuality. So these two planets are meeting. Both of them together is about attraction, love, relationship, and also something to do with babies as well, by the way, because one is the representation of copper, the other one is the iron. So obviously we need that conductivity here to have a baby. Let's not get into that. And also these two planets are really opposite to each other, right? Mars rules Aries, while Venus rules Libra. And what do we say? opposites attract each other. So uh, these two together is kind of like acting like the opposite pole of a magnet. They attract each other, but at the same time, they are natural enemies as well. So there is that love and hate relationship going on between Venus and Mars. It's kind of like knowing that I cannot function without the other. I need them in my life, but I also feel somehow getting blocked by them as well. Now, definitely Venus and Mars plays a significant role when it comes to the chemical attraction between two people. So as I said, Mars is the iron, Venus is the copper. Iron and copper conduct power and electricity. And thus, to create energy and motion, we need these Venus and Mars to generate some type of romantic connections with others or sexual energies with others. So if I want to look at this previous cycle, uh, the, one of the previous cycles, which happened on four degree of Virgo. Now this started 2020, June 2nd, and then we had the first four degree of Virgo, and then we had the first square happening uh, with them on 14 degree of Gemini to 14 degree of Pisces. So these would be sensitive degrees here. And then soon after the first square, Venus went retrograde. And then three months later, we had the second Venus and Mars square happening as well. So that would, squares are about adjustments, a little bit of a crisis situation. That happened around August 2019. And then after the second square, Mars turned retrograde. 
So basically in November 2020, we had Venus opposition Mars retrograde. Now, interesting fact that the opposition always happening when Mars is pretty much retrograde between those two planets. So it's always a very pivotal moment. And that opposition took place on 15 degree Libra to 15 degree of Aries. And then February 20th, 2021, we had the final Venus-Mars contact. Uh, it happened on 23 degree of Aquarius. It was squaring Mars on 23 degree of Taurus. So those are something to do with some fine and final adjustments, you know, whatever started around 2020. So then we had the next cycle. We started 2021, July 13th, and they met on 19 degree of uh, Leo. So I gave you those type of degrees so that you can go back and then check if you have got any specific planets on those degrees, how did you get affected by those? So some interesting facts to share about them. Retrograde Venus alignments recur approximately about every fifth conjunction with Mars. Okay. Uh, so they tend to be meeting or the retrograde Venus conjunction with Mars happens about every 77 months. Every 32 years, the conjunction actually happens in the same sign. However, since 1960, there was an irregularity going on, and that is going to last till about uh, 2060, and then it's going to go back to normal, and the, that normal period lasts for about 200 years, and then again, there is an irregularity coming in. So even they have got a pattern of irregularity going on as well at the same time. Now, 83% of the conjunctions happens when both planets are direct, um, sixteen percent of the times it would be when, uh, sorry, when Venus is actually in retrograde uh, motion. It happens approximately about every eight years. Very rare, but sometimes it happens when Venus is stationing. Now that's less than one percent actually. Approximately about fourteen conjunction in a in a good you know, 2,000 years time. So it's really rare. The next one, which is going to be happening is 2034. It's going to be happening on 20 degree of Libra. So that might be very important. And the last one happened in 1755, which happened on 16 degree of um, Capricorn. So you can see that this is a really rare event. Now, the last conjunction, as I said, happened on 19 degree of Leo, which is going to be ending now on the 22nd of February. So, it's really important. Now, what do we expect with this conjunction? So, of course, we've got the planet of urges and desire, and then we've got the planet of principles, money, relationship, and our values. There is an urge to act on our principles. Of course, with Venus, we want to attract something. And uh, Mars is the planet of individuality in the sign of freedom. So we want to attract somehow freedom and independence in our relationships, for example. So this could indicate kind of like a loads of start of a unique and special relationship as well as because Mars has got that cutting away element, it could be coming with separation as well. Venus and Mars, when they get together, it shows inconsist inconsistency though. So because relationship is in a constant go, it's, it goes through a constant kind of change all the time. And, and remember that the sun is always quite close to their conjunction because Venus never moves more than 48 degree away from the sun. And Mars is always in a direct motion in this conjunction. So Venus is what you really want, and Mars is how you get it. So in the sign of Aquarius, we have got all our long-term goals, what we want to achieve in, 
in, in the future. And Mars becomes quite rebellious about it. So it goes and then, you know, it might sweep people away. But Mars needs to realize here that I need to be able to collaborate with others as well at the same time. Venus is the symbol of feminine energy, while Mars would be the symbol of masculine energy. So this is about, you know, it could indicate that somehow people do need to come together because we are stronger. Aquarius is a fixed sign. So it is a connection to, to strength. But is the strength of your ideas, is the strength of your ideas. So if you have got a great idea, go for it. But maybe we need a bit of a negotiation going on as well at the same time. And that would be extremely important. Uh, if I wanted to give you the dates of the previous cycle, so this is a very technical video, by the way. So we had the conjunction 2021, July 13th, and then we had another conjunction, February 16th, 2022. Venus was actually retrograde. Then we had March 6th, 2022. We had Venus direct, and then we had another conjunction. So actually we had three conjunctions happening. And then we had uh, the squares in September 2022. Then we had the opposition 2022, December. And then we had the final square 2023, February 5th, around this. So what comes to my mind always with Venus and Mars is, is the Adam and Eve story. So we've got the apple there. Shall I reach out to the apple? Shall I have a bite of it or shall I not? So there's a little bit of a moral code. There is what is good and what is not so good when it comes to having freedom or not having freedom. And we can have loads of debate about it. When it comes to Venus and Mars, maybe we change our perception or ideas about sexuality, how the relationship should be working, whether am I allowed to get married twice, for example. Of course, there is an invitation here to create balance between your masculinity and your femininity at the same time. And, and because it's Aquarius, it brings in so much to do with chaos, changes, upheavals, sudden surprising events, for example. Um, Venus and Mars play a significant role when it comes to war and peace. Venus wants the peace, Mars wants the war. And often this is kind of like talking to us about that the two cannot walk in separate ways. If we want to have peace, we need to go into a war first. You know, so I'm not necessarily suggesting that we should be expecting a war, However, Pluto is about six degrees away from this conjunction, so it intensifies the connections what we are making, you know, because there is that fight for independence with Mars being there. And then Venus is kind of like bringing a third party, for example, into a picture to get an element of support. Aquarius can represent supports. These are the benefactors in our life or people who give us a piece of advice, just like our friends do, right? So when Venus and Mars get together in Aquarius, you might become a lot more rebellious, a lot more honest, for example, in your uh, personal relationships. Maybe you don't want to, you know, kind of attend this being nice to others all the time. I just want to be expressing my unique feelings. I don't want to follow anyone's expectations anymore. I want to have pink hair. I want to have, you know, yellow highlights in my pink hair. And then who cares what your opinion is? Yes, it could also indicate, you know, with Venus and Mars, we can run into those twin flames and soulmates, maybe in an unexpected way or in unique circumstances, for example. Maybe it is talking to us about, you know, meeting someone who is going to push us to have an element of awakening going on. Aquarius is the intuitive hit. So often uh, Aquarius is kind of like a situation that puts us on a path. But also it could be a time when you are trying to find a balance between 
the type of relationships I'm having with others and my own needs and independence as well. Maybe it's about cutting away an unhealthy relationship. You might, because Aquarius is the sign of detachment. So I want to detach myself from anything that withholds me, anything that blocks me in a way. It's a Saturnian sign. So there are the limitations and the hurdles we can actually run into that. It probably can indicate kind of like a new chapter somehow starting in your life. Maybe it's a finish or a start with those twin flames, what we tend to like using nowadays, you know. Um, and I also feel that the earth sign, not the earth sign, sorry, the uh, fixed signs are so much to do with manifestation because it's about bringing something down and then getting fixated about it, holding on to something. Aquarius is obviously an air sign, so we might hold on to our ideas and ideas about something. So Venus and Mars is pretty much about kind of like a little bit of a negotiation about how fixated we are about our own ideas, or shall we cut that away because that person is somehow not keeping track of my of mine somehow. It's very impossible with Aquarius being one of the signs that connected to information that we are going to be receiving information about certain type of unions. For example, imagine that, I don't know, with Pluto, there is a secret union going on, for example, between two countries that has never been revealed before. So a major question is that what do you desire versus what do you want? These two energies are not the same, okay? Because if you want something, you go for it, you act on it. And that would be the Marsian element. It's about acting on your principles, acting on your relationship, but also Aquarius is one of the money signs as well. So acting on your financial situation as well. And Pluto indicates there, which is six degree away, so it's quite close, but you know what? We need to go to the ends with it. We need to have the courage. We need to empower ourselves. And uh, we need to find that inner strength to make these things happen. So, but Venus wants to smooth things out when it comes to Mars. So it doesn't want Mars to be too impulsive. It wants it to, you know, negotiate first. Let's work together with others. We don't need to rush into certain type of things. That is also coming from the fixity here. So it serves us with a reminder that we need to bring two people's ideas together, for example, and then we can complete something together. Or it can indicate that two ideas do not need to compete with each other. Actually, we might be able to merge them somehow. It's a conjunction, and those two planetary energies are merging. Now, it happens in a sign of Aquarius, right? Which is the sign connected to experiments, innovation, long-term goals, friendships, visions collaboration, internet businesses. So these might be actually starting somehow a new era, you know, but also we have got that very strong desire here to detach ourselves from, let's say a social media channel, right? Because I feel like this is not going with my personal values or principles anymore. Or Aquarius can represent something to do with alternative methods. So we start exploring something futuristic, something um, alternative. For example, if it happens in your sixth house, it might be connected to an alternative healing. But at the same time, some of you want to cut that away and some of you will go for it. It depends which planet is stronger in your natal chart. Of course, Venus and Mars cycles are so much to do with relationship. So we might want intellectually stimulating relationships. We want, you know, to be with like-minded people. We want to be surrounded by people who share the same ideas, for example. And then when they don't, then it leads to an element of an argument. So it's kind of like, are you with me? Pluto being there, or are you not? 
are we fighting together for freedom or change or not? You know, but it also has got this outgoing, spontaneous element to Venus and Mars here as well. So obviously the like-minded people coming together and then we sit down for a chit chat over a coffee or a tea or whatever. So this brings in engagement, especially in an air sign. Mars wants to take the lead. It says, let's make a move. And then Venus says, you know what, let's just sit back. Let's have a sip of coffee. Let's talk it through. And then let's come up with a plan so that we can make it happen. I'd like to point out that this is actually squaring Jupiter at the same time. So surely Jupiter, which is also connected to being optimistic, and we feel like that the change is inevitable and it's coming around and, you know, enlarges things. So I feel like um, it has got a bit of a, a difficult possibility here because... Obviously, we have got, again, that freedom to explore something at the same time. You know, Venus wants that closeness and Mars is focused on individuality. So being close as like-minded individual, I feel like this is one of the uh, major message here. Let's initiate on your long-term goals. Let's initiate on things that you can align yourself with mentally, physically, emotionally as well. Have those ideas or ideas what you want to achieve. Just make sure that you are going to uh, get going about it. So I hope this video helps you with... Um, understanding of how this Venus and Mars cycle might uh, play out. You know, so some of the themes that are coming up here for you. It's about what you are passionate about, whether you are standing alone or you're going to be standing together with others. What do you want to invest into emotionally? It could also indicate that we have got this urge or desire to be loved, to be affectionate to others. And of course, sometimes it can become suffocating. And also it can indicate that your sex drive or the need to be intimately involved with someone, you know, can increase, can cause frictions, for example, through your relationship as well. With Pluto, you know, it's dealing with intense people, for example, around us. Maybe it's about having an affair. I'd like to point out, you know, that in mythology, Venus and Mars were actually lovers and they never got married. So Venus was uh, uh, married to Hephaestus, but she kept cheating on Mars. And then eventually Mars got humiliated and they were caught and all gods were laughing at them and so forth. Also, this aspect is about magnetic attraction. So what do you want to achieve what do you find kind of enjoyable in life you know so it can even represent a bit of a hobbies as well also how does my current relationship affect me why am i single uh, venus is also connected to popularity so i'm striving to get somehow more popular as well that could be an indication too and yeah, pretty much these are some of the some of the topics that are coming up with Venus. And of course, I mentioned previously the, the war and peace element to it as well. It might be about, because it happens in a community sign, right? So it might be about celebration, partying for, you know, if we are the younger generation, but we can also party when we are older as well, you know. So obviously Venus is about art, so trying to push through your unique art to others. Um, yeah, so this is what this uh, Venus and Mars cycle indicates. Surely we have got all these interesting times coming together. So Pluto is very much there. Uh, it definitely comes with a bit of chaos. I feel like some of the unions in the world as well are going to be breaking away and maybe new unions are going to be forming. So that would be the current Venus and Mars cycle. Have a great one and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.